All right. Thanks, everyone, for jumping in. Uh, lots of good news, lots of positive energy, and you know the uh, appreciation of what we're doing here. So let's try to keep up the momentum. I'll try my best to you know address any incoming uh, communication requests. I will definitely need help with that. That's probably one of the top priority items for people that have communication skills and any experience with the, the marketing or like uh, any type of PR stuff. All right, so good news, we also got 5K from, um, from Google in terms of the cloud credits. Um, so we're gonna figure out how to uh, migrate our data sets to Google and hopefully that uh, becomes a seamless integration. In terms of the items on the agenda, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna call for a volunteer uh, for note taking for this call, basically to identify actionable tasks, interrupt us when uh, it sounds like we're discussing an actionable task, uh, try to ask who's responsible for that ta uh, task, and summarize uh, the list of actionable items at the end of the call. Is there anyone on the call who would like to, to volunteer? All right, Daniel, do you want to help with that? I'll do it. All right, sounds good. Um, okay, so the first item on the agenda in terms of the actual operations, I think we can call that operations now because there's so many moving pieces. I think our idea of um, you know naming this you know process of coordination and having the coordinators uh, team is a good idea in the right direction. Um, there was a, a, a big knowledge bomb that I recorded um, as a call with Andrew uh, in terms of discussing some of the like processes that are happening and how to approach communication and how to engage people. So I highly recommend checking out uh, that call. I'll provide a link um, in, after this call, uh, but it's also available in the coordinators channel. So um, I think the key uh, dichotomy here is really differentiating the onboarding coordinators and team coordinators, which I think we're gonna call team advisors because that's what it really is. Like those people that exist within teams, they're advising people within the team and advising people that are incoming uh, and coming to the team. So again, like I think this, uh, this name will be better for the in-team communication. So let's see if that sticks. If not, we're gonna figure out another way to, to name those people. So, <clears throat> and I think Frank is, is testing the new onboarding uh, flowchart that we finished up yesterday with the help of Lesia. So hopefully that works and we'll be better prepared for the incoming uh, wave of, of volunteers. So the next piece is discussing human resources, challenges, and team needs. And Daniel, uh, do you want to jump in, in here? Um, the main thing that I have to say is that we do have <clears throat> some folks. We have uh, Ogale who's joining us, and she's going to be one of the folks who can help in, in doing some of that need wrangling. So we're, we're beginning to have some staff who are able to, to help talk to the different team coordinators or, or team leads or team advisors. I'm still learning our glossary. Um, and, and find out what those needs are and match those with, with the people who can help with it. All right, sounds good. Um, in terms of onboarding, I think Tyler volunteered to help us make more sense out of it. So maybe Tyler, you can give us a quick summary or intro and what's, what's going on. Um, let's see here and I had a call earlier on just to try and go through the flow chart and make sure that we understand, well, I un un better understood the way we're bringing people in and how to highlight who needs what resources when it comes to people. So I've kind of I'm slowly building up a bit of a template so I can hopefully copy paste a good chunk of it and then pull the specifics of what they say and see if I can find a point for them to be helped. Because I mean, there's, a, there's an element of handholding involved, but there's also an element of like, I don't want to say, go do this because yes, it might be useful, but we, they're all still volunteers and they might, you know, that's one of the reasons I tried to frame it earlier with a, somebody who came on, um, Arne, and he, um, he's, he listed a few different skills. So I just summarized them like, well, if you're interested in using this skill, 
go go do use that in this team. If it's more this skill, that team's looking for that. So it's a case of it's allowing some some choice rather than going like as much as much as, much as Daniel Turner, which went well. These need you go there, and I'm like, well, that's way more faster than what I did. But at, at the same time, um, I think there's a balancing act between because sometimes it won't be because as I said, as the as the problem gets bigger, it's not going to be a case of like we only need one person in one place. Things like somebody who's a data visualizer. Yes, there's there's no data visualization team as we've discussed. Data visualization comes in all the forms of data we're dealing with so there's no one place for them there's everywhere and it's a case of if they have statistical skills maybe geo's better for statistics or if they're if they're better with medical knowledge risk or vt might be a bit more use out of them or if it's you know the combination of the above and it is like we've said before i don't want to stick people in silos i'd rather just go these are the problems what can you do help where you can slide between where, where problems exist because that's kind of it's what I'm doing right now. I'm, exactly. I'm mixing between organizing communications and helping task VT with some data annotation and video editing stuff. Well, the video labeling stuff and we're talking about podcasts and audio. So my brain's full. Like it's really full right now. But. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's okay. And that's actually what we're seeing here on the scale. And I talked to this guy the other day and he gave me um, a point of reference to ants co colony as a way to describe what's happening here after I described it to him. Uh, and a similar way, you know, the ants, they have a very specific balance between different types of workers, gatherers, and other uh, types of ants. And whenever there is this balance, it kind of like organically solves itself because uh, ants are able to uh, change their roles. And we're, we're seeing the same thing. People are jumping over, you know, NLP task to the, the team task, then to communication, to other places, and kind of figuring out the need on the fly, which is beautiful. And it's actually like, you know, uh, comparing to the typical corporate or research structure, it gives so much power to the individual and to our nature of collaboration. That it's, it's simply amazing to observe. All right. Can I add something Go ahead. Uh, we have uh, one more amazing girl. Uh, I may pronounce her name incorrectly. Sorry, Ogali, oh, probably who volunteered to help Tyler with onboarding also. Uh, so just so everyone know, uh, I will help Tyler and uh, her to sync uh, um, and talk later. And maybe she can also probably help Magda to identify team needs. We have this task. And so we will know team needs. And there will be a person who knows uh, what people are joining us. So it's like very good uh, combo. Sounds great. On that onboarding uh, orientation doc side, one of the things we're also going to try to quickly do uh, over the next couple of days is um, split off the orientation guide and have that be something just nice and simple and then have something different that we, we recognize that need for a consolidated document that has all of the different kind of information about Corona Wine. So we'll, we'll hopefully be making that streamlined for, for the people who are coming in soon. Yep, and there is uh, the other interesting point that I discussed with Andrew is the fact that there is an, a text information overload happening everywhere on the, in their internet right now. And that's why people gravitate to calls and you know video calls because that human connection, audio and verbal communication is you know stronger than ever. So I think we're gonna try to figure out those onboarding slides that are very concise and actually have a person talking through them or something to to make it more seamless than you know a wall of text uh, that that doesn't that is not easy to to read through. All right, sounds good. Um, let's go to team reporting. I'll quickly remind the, the structure. The high level progress, quick summary on what you're working on, time to results, what are the results and how soon you can uh, showcase them, and what are the blockers, what do you need help with. And we're going to start with risk factors team. Maya, go ahead. Um, oh, I'm super excited and I'm super happy because it seems we've discovered a valid combination of terms to get very relevant results. And uh, so basically, we realized how to extract uh, risk factors 
and we are working now on <clears throat> a managing new list of uh, a, a new list of uh, keywords to combine them with existing engrams on a heart and probably very soon we will have some results to show. We have in parallel uh, an experiment made by um, Madeleine Cossi. And what he did is amazing. First of all, he told, well, I will not use the regular data set. I, will, I want to make my own. He made his own pickle data set, which is easy, easy to process because it's like kind of small and pickled. And then he <clears throat> limited articles to COVID-19. And then he kind of um, uh, found that uh, passion characteristics and uh, some other related terms so that he can uh, currently find the most common comorbidities, like all of them discussed in the papers. And so we will be capable to kind of do a logical representation, first all common comorbidities, then some of them in depth, and now it looks like some kind of a flow uh, we will be capable of presenting. No blockers, we're fine. Amazing, sounds great. Next team, Gio, Daniel. Yes, hi, uh, do you hear me? I had some mic problems, okay. Uh, so we've um, fixed some issues with um, locations and so on, geographical coordinates with uh, Juan Calvo for uh, data visualizations. Otherwise, uh, I don't have much uh, to report. Okay, sounds good. Um, is there any, um, any blocker or any type of resources that you guys need? Well, uh, more people, more time, but uh, that's uh, true for everybody, I guess. Um, is there a specific need? Mm, no, I mean, the, the problem is also getting more people. Uh, you have to get them out, up to speed and so on. So right now we only Do you need have to, the you know, team support. advisor, team coordinator on your team? Yes. Okay, so maybe it will be good to touch base with her. Who, who is the person? Him. It's Hyberson, uh, who I don't know if is in the call but uh but yeah i mean we're progressing it's just uh you know okay uh takes time can't Sounds have good. uh um what to say revolutionary news every day <laughs> for sure makes sense maya is pretty good at communicating that <laughs> right. yeah i might be slightly bad at communicating uh <laughs> the same way as maya <laughs> all right sounds good next task transmission christine Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so we also have some exciting news to share. Uh, we just got our preliminary results from our uh, search system into end, and we already sent the result to database teams for our first ever visualization, so it's pretty exciting. Um, so we also still continue to, working, to work on uh, improving the recommendation system and then we started some um, data extraction work. Uh, I do have a question that, because uh, a lot of NLP folks work uh, on several uh, kind of tasks, I think, at the same time. So I, I think maybe we need to kind of dedicate some people to a task. Because kind of they just too busy working on all everything. So. For example, we have talked about we want to get location information for all the papers, and I know some, some people are assigned to do that, but they are also working on some other tasks. So just like maybe there is a little uh, differentiation on the main tasks that would be helpful. Maybe it would be good to, because I've seen Mark mentioning that there are a lot of issues that are being solved by the core NLP stack team that right. could uh, already propagate to tasks, even though, as we mentioned before, redundancy is good, you know, there is a balance between that. So maybe uh, you guys can schedule a quick, uh, you know, 15 minute call or 30 minute call with Brandon um, before he falls asleep to, <laughs> to converge to, to some uh, reuse of the 
of the work that NLP stack team is doing. Yeah, okay, sounds good. And uh, yeah, and the last thing is, I think we need to check on our annotators on the data set uh, for study design classifications. Well, I'll work with them on that. Okay, sounds good. I just wanted to update one thing on the NLP stack thing. So uh, there were there were two NLP channels. Uh, I managed to con uh, to merge them into one, and then I'm uh, going to be mirroring all of the tasks that have NLP related work from all of the other channels onto the NLP thing. So that the, any updates on those boards will be updated on the NLP one, um, and people in the NLP uh, group will be able to see and and work on specific tasks, which should hopefully alleviate some of that problem. But uh, Christine, we should def definitely have a call later. So, yeah. Are you are you the best person to send um, an NLP people to if they're looking at specifically? I would say NLP. me or Christine. Uh, yeah, okay. I think Christine is, has been a little bit more active in the NLP space. Uh, I've been mostly focused on data sets and all of the issues that uh -huh. data sets is having this week. So, uh, well, yeah, one of us. Yeah. That's fine then. It's just, again, for <coughs> flow, flow, I want to know where the best people to tag things. Because if someone turns up just saying, I'm good at this one thing, I know where to send them. Okay, no problem. Thanks. All right. I think uh, to your point, Tyler, I actually created this uh, sheet, the basic version of channel, like NLP stag, uh, tags, like the tags NLP and BIRD and others, and uh, relevant resources. So maybe we can sync later today or tomorrow to like fill this in with uh, like associated people, the tags and stuff like that. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll work with that if you want. All right. Sounds good. Next team, uh, vaccines, Dan Sosa. Hey, everybody. Um, so yesterday on the call, I put out a, a call for help for, for BERT and stuff, and you guys answered in a big way, and Arthur helped facilitate that. So thank you all for reaching out and offering to help. I still have to respond to a few people who are interested in helping out. So I think we are, we're, we're golden on BERT capacity at this point. So that's, that's been amazing. We also got some help with annotations. So thank you to Tyler for jumping on board and helping with that. Uh, aside from the, the new people who are helping out, we are integrating kind of more accurate treatment extraction into our final pipeline. So a uh, big shout out to Malavika, Mahmoud, Isaac, Aradna, and Ben for doing that work. Um, that's going to hopefully be integrated and running pretty soon. Uh, separately, we're getting started on extracting molecular relations from text. So that's kind of a separate deliverable uh, working on that. And uh, yeah, just kind of also standardizing how onboarding is going to go in the VNT team. So good things are happening. And there is a very cool thing that Dan uh, managed to create. He basically took a wall of text that he was sending to newcomers in his team. And he put, um, put them into a simple uh, presentation. So maybe you can quickly uh, showcase that. Just so sure, yeah. Can, uh, do you want me to share my screen or should sure. I just like send it somewhere? Yeah, just share your screen quickly, go through what you're communicating. Uh, that will help other teams to, to better understand how to onboard more efficiently. Uh, yeah, so can you guys see this? Yep. Cool. So I just made a quick PowerPoint for some of the things. Like I've been, like Arthur said, I, I had kind of a wall of text of, different resources, but basically this PowerPoint has them all. So there's a welcome message. There's a few things that we should be thinking about. So like, what are the deliverables we're thinking about? How do we communicate? Where does the code go? All that stuff. Um, there's a lot of links in here to where to see the relevant resources for our team, Slack, Trello, GitHub. Uh, there's a team roster, uh, progress. So this is what the dashboard looks like so far. A couple logistics. So deadlines that we're all thinking about for Kaggle. Um, when, when do the stand-up calls happen and then just like getting started so adding people on Trello and then just like uh, encouraging people to, to just dive in so that's just the quick onboarding presentation that I have for for new people who are looking to jump on board VNT team I think it's amazing yes so, it is awesome. this is great Dan, Dan where is this really good. Um, I'm Dan, just can you share it please <laughs> I can I can I'm happy to I've been uh, I've been just sending it to people. I'm gonna post it on like I'm gonna move it to Google Slides and then post that in the Google Drive somewhere and link it in the channel. But for yeah, now, I'm just been sending it as a PDF good. to people. Yeah, please do that. Please do that. You sure. do actually have a folder in the Google Drive already, in case you haven't uh, seen it yet. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I'll put it on there. I'm I'm gonna move it over to Google Slides today. Awesome. 
All right. Sounds Can great. Add, add quick point, please. Go ahead. Uh, I saw on the presentation uh, when um, like one of the last slides uh, regarding Trello, like send your email to Dan. But uh, yesterday, yeah. I believe you shared uh, Artur that um, link where a person can add, uh, uh, add themselves on Trello board manually. Not 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 manually, but on their own. Maybe we can add that. There. Maybe, and here's a good uh, segue into what happened yesterday with um, that person that was, um, you know, sending uh, some some sensitive sensitive stuff. And maybe Daniel can give a quick intro. I'm not sure that you know we'll we should be able to add people automatically to travel boards just because it's becoming quite you know uh, sensitive in terms of like there can be a person that just comes in and deletes everything. Um, oh, so, okay. Daniel? Uh, yeah, so there's there two, two things. I'll, I'll maybe address them <clears throat> sort of separately. But because, especially with the Wall Street Journal article out today and such, we're going to keep on attracting an increasing number of people with varying motives. And so we're going to start slowly kind of locking things down. So what we're going to do is have probably um, every, since every board is associated with a team, every team's coordinator will be an admin for that board. And then we'll, we'll ask those uh, those admins, they, they can feel free to deputize other people to also be able to invite people, but for those to be people who they trust, who they, you know, they've, they've been working with for a little while, so that they might, so that a keener doesn't come on one given day and say, I'll take on these 20 tasks, and sure, I'll help onboard people onto Trello, and then the next thing we know, it's all, it's all you know, cat pictures and, and political discourse. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's one piece. And, and on that one side also, there was some good discussion that happened yesterday and we've added a piece to the orientation manual, but just to make sure that everybody really has that um, in mind that because we are such a wide group from all around the world with hugely different worldviews and different politics and such, that it, it really is part of our, our, our mission that we leave all of that at the door when we come in and what we care about within Corona Y is you know bringing in the data sets turning those into useful findings through machine code and then putting those out validating those and then putting those out and that anything that could be in any way divisive to the community we leave at the door so we'll, we'll also be you know paring away things if those seem to be uh, appearing in there and just keeping ourselves kind of on track and on task and, and building community instead of instead of potentially all right sounds great I, I think we've addressed that incident okay uh, to the extent that we, we weren't really prepared for it, but I think we did well, especially you, Daniel, uh, responding to that. Um, but yeah, let's, let's hope we, we're not going to have uh, a lot of, uh, you know, such incidents. Okay. I've got a decent experience of dealing with trolls for a very long time across the internet. So yeah, I'm kind of used to filtering and working out how to be nice, politely telling people to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of glad I missed this. <laughs> well, and, and to recognize oh. that, the, that there's a lot of people who are coming in from very different places. The, the, the person who was talking with yesterday was absolutely best intentions. Um, and so we'll have a whole range of things. We'll have people coming in with the best of intentions. We'll have people coming in just to mess with things for the fun of it. And we'll have people coming in who may have a specific agenda and have some strategies around how they can actually do some damage to what we're doing. So, you know, we, we just, we, we stay aware, stay friendly and, and keep on task as far as all that stuff goes. Exactly. Sounds great. All right, guys. And we still have uh, like two minutes, maybe for one quick question. If anyone has any questions, uh, newcomers or people that are confused or need help, uh, this is your time to, to speak up. I actually do have a question. Um, the incoming channel or incoming communication channel versus the general channel. I'm a little, I can see incoming communication is being funneled in from the website. I'm just not sure how this is being addressed versus the general channel because they seem to be serving the same purpose. Okay, so we're trying to move the introductions into the hashtag introductions channel to free up the general for like general discussions and make sure that the onboarding team will be more efficient at managing the introductions channel just by having only introductions in there. Uh, in terms of you know the flow of data, I think it will be uh, good for for you to connect with uh, Alessia and Tyler, just to to better understand what what's uh, what's the data flow right now. Okay, thanks. 
Oh, I also have an, a question regarding like um, Slack um, things. Like I'm not very um, experienced with Slack. So uh, what are the general guidelines for using the tags everyone and channel and here? Daniel, you want to jump in? Yeah, so, so, so basically, um, I mean, if you think of it as an office building, it's a matter of how loudly are you shouting to get people's attention. So within a specific channel, it can make sense. If you, if you want a quick question about something we get related to data sets, it's fine to tag. Uh, I mean, you could try just putting the information in, putting in your question and seeing if you get an answer. If there's something that's urgent, it's fine to say here. So, you know, in communications, if we're doing our daily call, then I might put here, you know, and then the, the Zoom connection for that. Um, everyone, you know, that's, that's ringing the fire alarm more. So that's, that's something that we really want to be sparing with. We use it if there's something that's either it's really exciting news or it's something that, that needs urgent attention or as an announcement that everybody at some point should pay attention to. Uh, that, that would be my take, but, uh, but anyone else is welcome to, to offer there. No, I completely agree the same method. Yeah, it's, the, everyone is the equivalent of a fire alarm. It's just, you won't shout fire in a lot for a building full of, it just, it's going to pull people's attention and there's plenty of studies that a distracted mind takes 20 minutes to get back to work. And if you, if you're in the middle of doing something that's complicated, and let's be fair, lots of people are doing lots of complicated work. Last thing they need is a ding and what's that? Cause I didn't expect it. And turns out that it's just a spammer or, or something that's, they could have got to an hour in an hour when it wasn't actually that impressing. Ah, makes sense. And I'll confess, my mea culpa is being way too here and everyone happy at the beginning. And so I think we can all work on, you know, being a modest in our year. Yep. Sounds good. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to upload recording and um, we'll post it, I think, on soon, but will actually help me uh, annotate and post it a little bit later today. Yeah, got you. All right. Sounds good, guys. Stay oh, healthy. I'll just... Bye. Just, uh, Go ahead. I was just going to really quickly say, so uh, Ogali is going to help with the onboarding and work with Licia oh. and Taylor to do with that orientation process. Um, risk factors uh, is going to show some, some of that hard risk information soon. Uh, Daniel Ageo is going to touch base with Fiberson around the HR needs that are there. For ties, uh, Christine's going to talk with Brandon about getting the uh, reuse of NLP code that's there. Um, he's going to check on annotators for classifications uh, in vaccines. Um, they're going to work to onboard those new members uh, and maybe try that, that new process um, and move the onboarding presentation uh, over to Google Drive to ship. All right. Amazing. I almost forgot about that. So thank you for, for interrupting. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.